Okay, so hi guys. Um, as promised, I uh, wanted to jump on and just do a quick live um, demo on things that you can do when you encounter a really wide or large nail. Um, so this is Ken, one of our friends, and um, he works at um, a gluten-free bakery, basically. They make desserts, gluten-free desserts, and he's volunteered to come in and borrow me his thumb. So I just want to quickly start off by saying, um, obviously we're not going to do this enhancement to last. So I haven't prepped this nail and I'm not going to, um, because we're going to take it off straight away afterwards because he's graciously, um, agreed to be my model. Um, so please don't take the prep into consideration. This is purely just showing you, um, options that you have if you need it to adjust the Vogue tips, um, to suit larger, um, thumbnails or larger nail beds um, so I've just taken the largest of each of the tips that we have available within the range at the moment um, out so I have uh, my stiletto and my coffin in long my square round and almond in medium and then my coffin in short um, we will soon be releasing um, medium coffins too so keep an eye out for that that'll come soon um, but I wanted to show you um, just the differences in the sizes. So all of these are either zeros or ones, which is the largest one in its um, shape. And as you can see, if I go in and I apply a little bit of pressure, um, the, none of these tips will fit properly because unfortunately, um, they're not necessarily made for super, super large nails. So we'll have a look. So that was the stiletto. This is the coffin. So whenever I'm applying quite a bit of pressure, I'm flattening out um, the tip. And you will find that when we're flattening out the tip, we're also flattening out the apex that's built into the product, um, which will affect the strength of it. Um, the square also doesn't fit. The round um, is probably the closest, but I also feel like it flexes the most. So we'll be careful with that. Almond um, doesn't fit, and then the short coffin again, very similar to um, the round. It actually mostly fits on the nail, but what we'll find with these ones um, are if you turn it to the side, you'll see you won't have a big gap between the tip and the um, the natural nail so we want to make sure that we're not applying too much pressure and we're not removing that gap because that's the gap that gives you strength traditionally that's what we would do um, but I wanted to give you a quick tip on if you were to encounter a client like this um, generally it would just be one nail so the thumbnails that's too large um, and ideally you don't want to have to now completely switch systems or you know have to sculpt a nail for this nail specifically um, so what I would suggest, what I would suggest is to um, give the nails just a quick shape. So like um, the shorter the free edge or just the corners of the free edge, um, the better your tips will fit. And you will find this when you're trying to do the system um, and maintain your client's natural length too. You might just have to taper the sides in a little bit. Um, to get the tips to just sit a little bit better and um, and then what we're going to do with these tips is we're going to try and select the tip that fits the nail the best but still still leaving a little bit of a gap between the natural nail and um the tip so that we have some gel under there and what we're actually going to do is we're going to apply this tip a little bit lower down so I don't know if you can see, but if I pull this tip down, so not close to the cuticle area, but away from the cuticle area and I apply it down, I don't have to apply that much pressure to get it to fit. And I also manage to then get it to fit from side to side. So I will have an issue because I have a gap at the cuticle area, um, but that's where your elastics comes in and your float coat over the top. Um, that's going to add your strength and complete this um, enhancement so that it becomes a whole nail as opposed to just a tip. So what you're doing in essence is you're using your Planet Vogue tips like you would traditional tips. Um, and you're just gonna reshape that tip um, 
to get it to the shape or the length that your client needs. So obviously if your client wanted really long nails, um, like I've sized, sized the short coffin and that one fits beautifully when I pull it down a little bit. Um, but if your client wants a longer nail, so like if we pull this one down and we're not 100% happy with the length, we needed more length, you would try a different shape to see if you get one that fits nicely from side to side. Um, but still allows you to have a little bit of length on there. So I'm just checking all of them, um, but I'm probably gonna end up going with um, either my round, which seems to fit really well, my almond, or my short coffin. And I'm gonna explain to you which one I choose and why I choose it. Hi Beth. Merry Christmas to you too. Hi Alyssa. So um, if we have a look, so this is the short coffin. So do you see that when I'm applying it, um, I get coverage from side to side without it flattening out too much, which means that I'll have quite a bit of gel um, in this area here. So I'm leaning towards using this tip as opposed to um, the round which I have to flatten out quite considerably to get it to fit. The almonds not bad but because the almonds side walls or lateral structure is not 100% straight I feel like I might get a little bit of notching um, with that one so I'm definitely going to go for my short coffin in this case um, to adhere that. So what we're trying to do with this because obviously the full tip does not fit, um, fit like you would traditionally apply it and um, so we're going to apply it a little bit lower making sure that my side walls um, or my lateral structure is nice and straight and it's nice and strong i'm making sure that i'm not applying too much pressure so that i still have a little bit of a gap between the tip and my natural nail which will help um, to provide some strength in uh, your stretch area and then once this tip's adhered I'm gonna um, do a nice float coat of elastics over the top or a builder coat of elastics over the top um, to make sure that we're getting good sufficient strength. Um, so just again to recap, Ken's helping me out today. So I'm gonna skip a few ste steps because we don't want this nail to last. We're gonna take it off straight afterwards. So I'm not gonna prep um, the natural nail um, and I'm not gonna edge up the inside of the tip. But at this stage, once you've decided which um, tip you wanted to use, you would then go ahead and edge up the inside of the tip to ensure that your elastics adheres to the tip nicely. Hey Zoe. Oh, I know this glitter. I, oh, but they're so grown out. I really need to redo this hand. Um, so what we would have done now is just edge up that inside of the tip, but we're gonna skip that step and we're gonna go straight into what we would have normally have done, so if we've prepped this natural nail, we would have applied sticky bond um, in one to two coats on the nail. We would have applied one coat of your Elastics Clear um, on the natural nail, pop that into um, the UV lamp and cure, UV LED lamp and cure that for 60 seconds. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do that now, omitting the prep and the sticky bond um, because we're gonna remove this nail straight afterwards. So I'm just going to go in and apply a super thin coat. This coat is meant to be similar to um, a base coat application when you're doing a gel polish application. Um, so it doesn't have to be really thick. Um, and remember the Planet Vogue way. We want to make sure that this coat goes as close to the cuticles as possible without touching it. Um, so that when we've applied our tips the way we normally would, you can pop that one in the lamp for me whilst I'm talking. So, um, so um, we want to make sure that our base coat layer goes all the way to the cuticles without touching it. So that when we're applying our tips like we normally would, um, that we leave that little bit of a gap and that we're bridging that gap with our float coat of elastics over the top. Um, I'm going to ask Ken to help me with my little torch. Um, uh, you have the option to um, pop your torch. So like what I normally do is I hang my torch off of my lamp here um, or um, if you are really good at maintaining the pressure with your one hand whilst you're using your torch, you can do that. Um, alternatively, you can get your client to help you with your torch, which is what I'm going to do. 
so can um, when I'm ready I'm gonna say I'm ready so then I'll get you to just pop your the torch on there at the top yes and then just hold it over the nail for me so that we can just flash cure that in place so we're imagining that this tip is edged up on the inside. You never want your tip to look smooth on the inside when you're applying it, because that will mean that your tip will not adhere properly. You need to edge up your tip. We're not doing that today for Ken, because we're gonna take this nail off as soon as we're done. You're gonna take your elastics and you're gonna apply it to the section where you've edged up the nail. And now because we're sticking this tip down a little bit lower on the natural nail, we're not sticking it all the way to the cuticle area, the contact area is a little bit smaller, so we don't have to go lower. Um, and you just wanna pop a little bit of elastics um, at the cuticle area, that's so that that elastics can fill the inside gap of your apex. Then we're gonna take our tip, we're gonna um, pull it down, so like normally we'd take it from the cuticle area, but now we're gonna take it about a third down apply pressure making sure that we're getting that little bubble to move and I'm just going to pop a little bit more elastics in that tip so I didn't pop enough in so we'll go in push that bubble down so that it reaches the free edge Apologies, I'm all thumbs today. It's quite warm here in Melbourne today. Um, no. Just gonna pop a little bit more in. So this can happen when you're doing using the technique that I'm using now, just because the apex gap is a little bit lower down um, and we're not quite reaching that. So we're just gonna try that a little bit more. Ah, that's much better. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll get you to pop that on. Thank you, that's perfect. So now we're just gonna flash cure this for 10 seconds. And my 10 seconds are always very long. Don't know why. Just gonna move it. No, just keep the torch still, thank you. I'm gonna make sure that I'm getting the whole nail. Thank you. Okay. So now you can switch that off for me. So now you can see what we've done We've stuck this tip down a little bit lower, so we have about um, a third of the nail exposed at the back, the tip stuck down, but we're still maintaining um, a little bit of a gap between the natural wall. It's filled with gel now, but there's a gap between the natural nail and the tip, which will give us strength. Um, we have straight side walls and that whole nail, the whole free edge of the nail is completely covered um, by a strong tip. So if this was the length that you wanted, you wouldn't necessarily shorten this. Um, but you'll generally find when you're pulling it down like this, you will shorten it uh, because this nail will now be a little bit longer than the other nails in the same shape. Relax me, please. Thank you. So I'm just going to chop this off. I am not going to do my full cure because we're going to soak this off in any case. So. And um, normally at this stage, you would have popped it into the lamp and done your full six, 60 second cure. We're skipping that step for today just because we're going to take it straight off. But normally that's what you would do. And then normally you would go in and you would blend this tip and shape it whichever way you need it to do. And then you're going to go in and you're going to give it a wipe with acetone once you've done that. Hi, Donna. Yes, I know. This was one of the ones that you asked about how to do larger nails so I'm just gonna give the tip a wipe with acetone I'm not gonna wipe the actual elastics um, but obviously if you had blended it and stuff you would wipe the elastics and just give that a quick buff beforehand now we're gonna go in and we're gonna apply elastics and we're gonna same as what we do with our normal tips we're gonna bridge the gap but if we look at this nail from the side wall we need to just adjust the apex slightly. So we want a little bit more height in this area here, which we're gonna do using our elastics now. So I'm gonna take my elastics. I'm gonna do a wet, wetting layer of elastics first. So this is where I just apply a very thin layer of elastics. Um, and this acts as a guide, making sure that my elastics goes everywhere where I need it to go. But it's a very, very thin coat. Then I'm gonna go in 
and I'm going to apply a little bit more and I'm going to try and get my elastics to stick to one side of my brush and have a little bit more gel on the one side. I go in, I pop it down and at that gap and I float it from side to side and what I'm doing by doing that is I'm filling that gap with my elastics. And again, this is where your torch comes in handy because if you get that height right and you're very happy with it, you can just grab your torch to flash cure um, that height in place so that you don't lose it, which is what I'm going to do now. Thank you. So just grab your torch, give that a quick flash cure. And then you would go in and do a full cure of 60 seconds. And then I would do a second layer of that just because I'm not 100% happy with my height in my stress area just yet. And so I would need to do two coats. Just relax me. Thank you. <coughs> so same thing. We're going to go in and just do a thin coat of elastics over the whole nail. This just help that, helps that flow coat um, self level beautifully so that you don't have to worry about lumps and bumps too much. Go in with your gel on the one side of your brush, pop it down and then float it into the areas where you need it. Creating height where you need the height to be. Check it from all sides and if your elastics is getting away from you, flash cure to prevent it from running. Okay, so once you've done your second coat, you would go in and cure that for a full 60 seconds in your lamp. Once you've cured your 60, uh, cured it for 60 seconds, if you needed to adjust any shape, you would go in and just remove your tacky layer and then file and shape the way you would with any of your normal enhancements. So just grab your file. Go in and adjust your um, apex height if you need to. And I apologize if I file any product off because we did not do a full cure. But normally you would do a full cure and you wouldn't struggle with that much. Make sure your lateral structure is nice and straight. Nice and straight. If you filed your elastics like I'm doing now um, to file it into shape, um, you wouldn't have to do another layer of elastics. You can simply just give this a good buff um, and then you're ready to apply your gel polish over the top. So I'm just going to give that a quick buff. Okay, so that's what you're going to do when you encounter nails that's too large for a traditional full cover. Um, you will apply that tip a little bit lower down, making sure that you're getting full coverage on your sides. Um, and then you will bridge that gap with your elastics, doing a nice float coat and giving it a good buff if you need it to do that. I hope you found this video helpful. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to pop it in the comments below. Um, even if you're not watching this live, we're always happy to help. Have a good day and Merry Christmas if I don't see you before then.